Hello! This video will be a bit different than the ones we usually make. This one will not be about a project in specific, but instead we want to share some thoughts with you. As small business owners, we are frequently asked by ourselves or by others how we want to grow our business. If we want to expand, to hire more people, to buy bigger machines, to sell all over the world, etc. And it is sometimes hard to come up with an explanation for our answers. We definitely want to get better, but we do not necessarily want to grow in size. We've given these thoughts a bit of time over the past years, but we had never reached the point where we were confident about where we stand regarding these questions. But the other day, my brother lent me a book featuring a short story related to craftsmanship that he said could be interesting for me. The book is called The Night Visitor and Other Stories by B. Treven, and the short story is called Assembly Line. I read the story on a train ride to Lisbon this week and it spoke so much to me that I wanted to make this video sharing some of my thoughts regarding being an artist or a craftsman in today's capital-based society. The story revolves around a discussion between an American businessman and a Mexican Indian craftsman. The American was on vacation in Mexico and met an artisan who made the most beautiful, one-of-a-kind baskets. He used natural fibers that he would gather himself in the forest, dyed with natural dyes extracted by him from local plants, roots and insects. He was a very talented artist and he would once in a while sell his baskets at a local market. However, his life was not only to make baskets, but also to take care of his farm, where he grew his own food. The businessman met the craftsman squatted in front of his house, working on his baskets, and asked him how much they cost. He answered something like 35 cents. The American man was surprised by how affordable those pieces of art were, and already envisioning some sort of business possibility, asked how much he would charge for 10. The craftsman answered 30 cents, so the businessman went further and asked how much 100 would cost, to which the craftsman answered, politely but not too enthusiastic, 25 cents. The American bought the few baskets the craftsman had in stock and returned to New York. There he made business with a luxury candy maker who wanted to order 10,000 baskets to use as fancy packaging for their expensive candy. They agreed on $1.75 for each basket, which would result in a $15,000 profit for the businessman. They closed the contract and the American went back to Mexico. There, he asked the craftsman the cost per basket if he would place an order of 10,000 items. After thinking a lot about his question, the craftsman answered him that 10,000 baskets would cost him $2 each instead of the much lower price he was offering before. The American was furious with his answer and asked him how was that possible, as he was used, as we all are, to get a cheaper price for a larger quantity. So the craftsman tried to explain that for producing such a large quantity, he would have to spend a long time searching for his materials in the forest. He would have to kill many, many plants and many, many insects, disrespecting nature and disrupting the natural balance of the ecosystem. He would need to find a way to carry such a big load of materials and it would take years to produce them, making him so busy that he wouldn't be able to grow his vegetables or take care of his animals, so he wouldn't have anything to eat. The businessman told him that he would make so much money that he could buy all the vegetables and all the food that he could ever need and suggested he could hire all the people in the village to work for him and help him collect the materials and make the baskets. But the craftsman explained to him that he could only rely on the food he grew, as he couldn't be sure that the food grown by others would always be available or at an affordable price for him. 
and if you would hire the entire village, no one else would have time to grow their food as well leaving the village completely dependent on external production. And even then, with the prices of everything constantly rising, the money he was asking for the baskets wouldn't be enough. The businessman was very mad and still couldn't understand. So the craftsman tried to explain that most of all, in each basket he had ever made, he had put a piece of his soul in it. And if he had to make 10,000 of them, it would certainly drain his soul, and the baskets would lose their uniqueness, their quality, and would turn out all the same. The businessman left, furious and thinking the craftsman was the most stupid human person in the entire world, and was wasting the opportunity of a lifetime. The story ends up with the writer observing that that's how it was prevented that 10,000 baskets used as packaging for fancy candy ended up in New York's trash bins, together with the pieces of the soul that the craftsman had put in each one of them. We've related to this story quite a lot, because it's certainly tempting to make a lot of money if an opportunity like that arises. But usually, to do so, you're probably abusing nature resources. You're selling all of your time, so you lose the availability to take care of yourself and the ones that surround you. You become each day more dependent on even more money, as you increasingly need to pay other people to produce your food, fix your house, make your clothes, and etc. You end up selling part of your soul, and you feel depressed, and then you need even more money to spend on things that make you feel happier. And regarding your art, you may lose all of your natural creativity, so the result of your work lacks in quality and ends up losing all of its real value, becoming only something to trade for more money. I think there's a lot we could all learn from this story, but I'm definitely not a socio-economic analyst, so I definitely recommend reading it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share your thoughts with us and hope to see you next time.